Let's begin with a prayer, shall we? O oh God, on this day of Pentecost, we pray for your Spirit to offer us new and fresh interpretations of your Word and wisdom for this coming week as we walk the journey with Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. When my kids were young, we used to try to impress on them the, the importance of the past, to have a sense of history of those who had gone before them. Now, this was not hard for me because I have always been a bit of a history buff. So we would take our kids to certain historical sites and places within our country. For example, we visited the Citadel in Halifax. We visited Grand Pre National Park in Nova Scotia, where the expulsion of the Acadians happened. We visited the Plains of Abraham in Quebec City and Parliament Hill in Ottawa. And when we lived in Montreal, we used to make trips down to Old Montreal, and we would visit places like St. Joseph's Oratory and Mount Royal. And I remember on one occasion, we even went to a St. Jean-Baptiste Day parade and learned about French culture. Although I must say we did not wave any Canadian flags on that parade, the, the fleur-de-lis only. And then um, here in, uh, in Toronto, we visited places like uh, the CN Tower, the Science Centre, the Hockey Hall of Fame, of course. We even visited the Big Apple once. I'm not talking about New York City. I mean the Big Apple out near the 401 in Coburg. You know the one. You've been there. It has the great apple pies. Well, the thing about all these places is they carry significance in the life of our nation and in the life of the world in many cases. They are special places to us. And I don't think it is too much of a stretch to move this into the spiritual realm. Um, and I have to tell you, my, my kids didn't always appreciate these places that we took them. I, I, I forgot this one. At one time, we, we visited, we were on the way to Florida. And I've always been a Civil War buff, so I took them into this Civil War battlefield and museum. They were not impressed. But I enjoyed it. I had a good time. But when you move this into the spiritual realm, you discover that all of us have these places that are important and significant in our Christian journey. Places perhaps where we have felt closer to God at times. The old Celtic Christians called them the thin places. And the scriptures are full of these places. Think about Jacob out in the wilderness. And if you remember the story, he has that dream of the ladder extending from heaven to earth and the angels ascending and descending. And when he wakes up, he says, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. Or there's Moses who is at the burning bush and he, he senses, senses its holy ground and he takes off his shoes. Or there's Elijah out in the wilderness experiencing the, the earthquake and the wind and the fire, but he doesn't see God in any of those. He, he feels God in the still small voice. And Isaiah in the temple, he, he sees God high and lifted up. Even Jesus experienced sacred spaces in his own life. On the Mount of Transfiguration, his glory was revealed. To him before his disciples. Now down through the centuries, the church has even, even named some of these places after great saints. But it's interesting to note that after the Reformation, a lot of Protestants took a more rationalistic approach. They would say things like, well, one piece of ground isn't more holy than another. All ground is holy. God is everywhere, is he not? And while that is true, I think we will all admit there are some places that carry greater significance for us than others, places where we have truly felt 
the presence of God. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and I'm sure that for those early believers on the birthday of the church, that day of Pentecost was holy ground for them as they sensed the Spirit of God coming in their midst as the helper. Our Old Testament lesson for today is a story in the life of the Israelites where they believed God was their helper as well, his spirit, and it's a kind of holy ground for them. And Samuel even sets up a memorial and calls it Ebenezer. Thus far, the Lord has helped us. Robert Robinson was an 18th century English hymn writer. And Robinson had a very difficult upbringing. His father died when he was very young. He was sent off to London to learn the trade of being a barber, but he fell into a life of gangs and violence in his teens. And on one occasion, he went with a group of his friends to hear the famous English evangelist George Whitfield. But they went not because they were interested in hearing him, they wanted to ridicule him. But while they were there, Whitfield's words somehow spoke to Robinson, and he made a commitment of faith. And at the age of 23, he decided to go into the ministry, and around that same time, in 1758, he wrote his most famous hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. But you know, Robinson continued to struggle with the life of sin. He struggled with depression and with backsliding in his faith. And in one of his darkest moments, he was, he was riding one day in a stagecoach, and there was a lady sitting across from him who had a hymn book opened, and she was humming a tune. She could, he, Robinson couldn't believe it. It was the very hymn he had written years before, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And this lady, who didn't even know Robinson, looked at him and said, Sir, what do you think about this hymn? Do you like it? Robinson said, Madam, I am the unhappy soul that wrote that hymn many years ago, and I would give anything today to feel like I did back then. I would give anything. Well, today's story is about the prophet Samuel, and he's leading the Israelites during a time when they are descending into the worship of idols and other gods. And because of that, God has given their enemies victory over them. And on one occasion, the Philistines had a victory and they stole the Ark of the Covenant, took it away from the Israelites. But they didn't keep it long because God sent plagues upon them and they finally gave the Ark back. But the Israelites did not treat the Ark seriously. They didn't restore it to its proper place in the worship of God, they actually stored it. They hid it away for 20 years until they finally restored it to its proper place in God's worship. And then God began to give them victories once again. And in today's lesson read for us, he gives them a victory over the Philistines. And Samuel is grateful on behalf of the people and sets up this memorial. And he names it Ebenezer, which literally means the stone of help. But he says, thus far the Lord has helped us. And it was a reminder to the ancient Hebrews that they did not gain any victory themselves. God was the one who was in charge. God was the one who was their true helper. Now on this Pentecost Sunday, we are reminded about how God leads us in the Spirit. And Samuel was saying that God's help was with them both in their victories and in their defeats. God never abandons his people. And there are a number of lessons I think we glean from this story. One is that God helps those who are faithful to him. Verse 3, So Samuel said to all the Israelites, if you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then rid yourselves of these foreign gods and the Ashtoreths and commit yourselves to the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. 
So the Israelites put away their Baals and Ashtoreths and served the Lord only. You see, they had issues with obedience to God. They had descended into idols and other gods, and they had some bad leaders. The, the priest Eli had two sons who took over his work as priests, but they misused their positions. Israel was trying to depend upon their own strength. And they finally came to their senses, and they set up this stone with Samuel, a reminder of God's help. And of course, there are many things in our lives that cause us stress and anxiety. But we need to remember that God is our help, as Psalm 46 puts it. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. No matter what happens, no matter how opposed the world is to us, God works for good. And the leaders of ancient Israel had to keep reminding the people of this. Moses was the one who passed the mantle of leadership on to Joshua. Deuteronomy 31 says, Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them, and you must divide it among them for their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you, and he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. And when the Israelites were about to enter the promised land, Joshua says this, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God is faithful to those who are faithful to him. Next, we must recognize God's help when it appears. Verse 10 in today's scripture, While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to engage Israel in battle. But on that day the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them into such a panic that they were routed before the Israelites. You know, we often look for miracles from God. We, we desire signs and wonders. And we are often disappointed. Because, you see, most often God works behind the scenes. He works through the natural order and through people and through circumstances. He helps us by giving things and sometimes by taking things away. Samuel had to challenge the Israelites to put away their idols and serve the Lord and discover their true help. And he names this memorial Ebenezer, which in Hebrew literally means the stone of the help. God is the great helper. He does not forget his people. We all have certain Ebenezers that remind us of where our help comes from. These could include a hymn, a song, a Bible verse, a picture, a mentor, a sacred place. The psalmist reminds us of the one who is our ever pleasant, present help. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who is maker of heaven and earth. Next, it is important to mark the place where God has helped you to remember his goodness. Verse 12 from our scripture, Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen. He named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. I think it's always important to remember how God has helped us in the past. And future generations need that. And we need today to be able to celebrate important milestones 
and anniversaries in our lives, and they should be high on our list of things, even in the church. We should always be celebrating things like baptisms and child dedications and welcoming new members into our midst. We need to hear the testimonies of how God is working among these people. What is your Ebenezer today? What holds meaning for your faith? You will remember the famous novel, A Christmas Carol, and Charles Dickens named the central character of that story, Ebenezer. And maybe he had a double meaning in mind. What began as a negative became a great positive. An unredeemable miser finds redemption. In many ways, this is our story in Christ, finding our Ebenezer that turns us back to God. In Scripture, the Holy Spirit means helper, comforter, advocate. A week and a half ago, I had the privilege of attending a preaching festival, and it gathered pastors and preachers from all across parts of North America, from many different denominations. And I have to tell you, it was a little bit like a, a kind of modern-day Pentecost, where the denominational barriers were all broken down, and we all gathered together for one purpose, to discuss this particular theme about preaching. Preaching hope in a weary world. Preaching hope in a weary world. And that, my friends, is really the message of Pentecost. The Apostle Paul put it this way, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we tend to beat ourselves up because of mistakes from long ago. But we need to remember God, the one who is our help. We need to set up our Ebenezer stone, whatever that is, as a reminder that we are forgiven, that we have chosen a new direction, that God has made a covenant with all who put their faith in Christ. Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit in John's gospel, and he had this to say, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Samuel was a wise and godly man. He was a skilled leader with a good idea. He recognized a truth about our human nature. We are forgetful. We seem to remember all the slights and the wrongs done to us but we are not so good about remembering the kindnesses done, especially the goodness of the Lord. At Ebenezer, Israel could stand next to that big rock and remind themselves, yes, we are serving a living and faithful God whose mercies are everlasting. Or as Samuel put it, thus far, the Lord has helped us. Let us pray. O oh God, today we contemplate the sacred spaces of our experience. We think of the places where we have felt your presence most strongly. Places where we have sensed the work of your Holy Spirit, breathing into us the life of Pentecost. May we continue to cherish those places and may they inspire us to greater service. 
Today we raise our Ebenezer. Thus far the Lord has helped us. Remind us of our vision this day, O God, to be changed through Jesus in community and to engage like Jesus in our world. So send us forth to remember who we are in you, O Lord, for you are our help and our strength, our Ebenezer. Thanks be to God. Amen.